Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Pronoun TV and the Stephanie Stevens Show. I am so excited today. I have one of the most fantastic entertainers on from TikTok today. She's a TikTok sensation. Her name is Katia Smirnoff Sky. I hope I said that right. And she's from San Francisco. She's a uh, uh, an entertainer of all sorts. Plus, she has a wit like no other. And we decided to have her on the show because she is fantastic. And not only that, she's really engaging. And that's what we like the most. And that is what the producers saw. And they thought we should invite her on the show because we thought that she would be great as a holiday star, superstar, oh, yes. somebody that can lighten the mood and teach us a few things about education and inspiring others to just be fabulous. So welcome to the show, Miss Katya smirnoff Scott. Oh, Did I say that right? thank you. Yes, it's smirnoff Scott. Two vodkas, one person. You know, th thank you so much, oh, Stephanie, oh. For, for having me. You know, many many of the, 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 the generation zeals and the, the millennials on the, the ticking talk, they, they call me Auntie Katya. But, but, but my, my full name is... Oh. Katia Shmianovsky, the Countess Katia Shmianovsky. That's right, I'm a Countess. My late husband was the Count Nikolai Alexandrovich Shmianovsky. Nikki and I met when I was 17, he was 78. But from the moment our eyes met, I knew we would spend the rest of his life together. And they were the three best years I ever had. And, and then Nikki died, as older husbands so often do. <laughs> it's so true. You are <laughs> so you're actually from Russia? Well, yeah, I was I was born in the Soviet Union in 19 a long, long time ago. You know, people always ask me, they say, Auntie Katya, what's that accent? You know, and I always say, well, it's it's vaguely Eastern European, ever changing, and, and, and sort of stuck in the land of old timey uh, movies, sort of mid Atlantic, I suppose. <laughs> now I see that you. have have a great following I on do. TikTok. The yeah. young, like you said, the young millennials are loving you. They I love so. engaging with you. Well, you know, everyone needs so. an auntie. Is, is what I find. And, you know, I, I, only, I started about a year ago on the ticking talk. And my, my friend, she said, she said, Katya, you need to get on the ticking talk. That's where all, all the young people are. And I, I don't know a great deal about technology. I mean, I, I just realized that when you go on the internet, it, it, you're not going on AOL. No, it's totally different. It's very modern. But, but, but I, I started doing these ticking talks, you know, because when we were all in quarantine, people needed an auntie, an uncle or a mame. You know, to, to, to spread a little mm -hmm. love, to, to tell people how, how special they are. You know, as an auntie, it is my job uh, to, to open, uh, 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 to show people uh, new doors, new windows that they never even dreamed existed. And that's, you know, that's the, the, the joy. But I think that's why people connect with me. That and because I talk crazy all the time and, and seem uh, to amuse them, uh, uh, you know, and, that, and that's fine. That's fine with me. Mm -hmm. So do you, what do, what do the young kids call your drag? Or, or, or is, is it okay? That yes, pronoun, yes, is that pronoun okay? Your, yes, I mean, I prefer the, you know, my, pro, my pronoun is auntie. I mean, if you, you know, if you roll, if you oh, roll okay. onto, on the street, I'm just auntie Cartier, you know. Uh, I think, you know, my, my, my brand of, of drag, because drag mm -hmm. is whatever whatever you throw on and, 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 and makes you feel like the you that you want to be at that moment. My brand of drag is, well, it's not as theatrical as I said, but I suppose it's more theatrical and less theatrical at the same time. I basically just do rich old white lady drag and that's, and that's fine with me. Well, you know, I'm used to that because of the women in Miami. I used to hang out in Miami and Coconut Grove. And Coconut oh. Grove with the rich socialite. Oh, I remember the Grove. That was fun. Yeah, I used to I used to frequent Coconut Grove in 197, a long, long time ago. Yes, I'm that old. Oh. I stopped aging in 1980. My blood is 97% yeah. hundred proof vodka. I have pickled myself from within. Good for the skin, terrible for the memory. Now, I was I was in San Francisco when I was just a young, a little young pronoun. And um, oh. back then, I went to 
because you're in San Francisco, right? Yes, yes I am. I, I'm in I'm in Twin Peaks. That's the hills uh, in San Francisco, the Swish Alps, where old gays go to die, and and that that's where that's where I live. I love I love San Francisco, my little Sodom by the sea. <laughs> now I used to I the first time I when I when I had a little when I was I had a little boyfriend in San Francisco. Oh. We went to the the Saint. I think it's the St. Francis Hotel oh, on yes. the elevator with the glass bottom. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Terrifying. Terrifying. Yes, it is very terrifying. And it was the most um, terrifying thing ever in my life. But I remember that the most. And I remember going to a nightclub in Knob Hill. Oh, yes. Which one was it? Do you, do you recall? It was, it was a little, I think it's, it's a, it was a little white house and it, it had a, a patio outside with a big white wall face. Like, I, I don't know the okay, name I of it. Remember. It's been like 40 years oh, since I've been Oh, I, I, you know, I, I, the cinch, perhaps. Maybe it was the cinch. I don't know. That might be it. That but, might but, be it. But like I said, is it, San Francisco is a fantastic place. I just could not live there with all those hills. And a, what's that little winding street? Oh, called? Lombard, Lombard Street. It, it's the, the winding oh, one. Lombard. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it's a mess, you know. But, but the hills, they're good. They're good for your ass because it helps it stay, oh. stay pert, you know. Uh, it's a wonderful yeah. town. Mm -hmm. Now, have you ever gotten drag in your car in a convertible and driven down Lombard Street? Well, I don't believe in convertibles. Therefore, they don't exist. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, 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 so have I gone down Lombard in drag? I've been down Lombard in drag. I, I did a photo shoot on Lombard years ago. And I felt I felt very, uh, you know, Audrey Hepburn and in, in, in Roman <laughs> Holiday on the back of a Vespa, which was terrifying because, you, no. you know, it was a spectacle. So, so, what, so what are you doing now for Christmas? I know you're performing at Feinstein's tonight. Oh, no, Feinstein's next weekend, the 17th and 18th. Oh, my, yeah. my holiday okay. spectacular, now in its fourth to 15th tinsel uh, coated year. Uh, tonight I'm doing a little show called Misfit Cabaret with Kat Robichaux, who was on a little show called The Voice. And uh, I'm just I'm just singing one number. It's a it's an in and out kind of gig at the Alcazar Theatre. Mm -hmm. It should it should be fun. And you know the the holiday show. It's it's one of my favorites. I just I just love doing it because I love the way that you Americans celebrate the Christmas. You know the, the holiday season. When I when I was a little girl growing up in Moscow, not that I was ever little, but I was young. Mm -hmm. oh. Long, long ago. We didn't celebrate the way you do here. There were no Christmas tree trim and decoration by uh, Tiffany's, no dreidels made of the clay. And yet the average Soviet child uh, for the Christmas, they might get, I don't know, uh, uh, some candy, uh, uh, a coat, maybe some boots for working in the bottle factory after school. You know, so, so I just love, uh -huh. I love to celebrate here. Now, of course, I, I'm actually Jewish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I converted to Judaism. I, I did, yes. You know, I, I, my, I was friends with I was friends with Sammy Davis Jr. Do you know who Sammy Davis was? Well, Sammy, Sammy reminded me a lot of my late husband. They were both five three and only had one eye. That's where the similarities <laughs> ended. But but you know, Sammy told me about a religion where you have a cocktail hour and then four glasses of wine before dinner. Sign me up. Oh. And that, that's how I that's how I converted to Judaism, you know, one of God's chosen oh. people. So I know that you are you're in an are you in an open relationship with Alata? Is that oh, your partner's yeah, name? No. Alata is one of my dearest friends. She's a burlesque dancer, Alata Boutte. And and, and oh, she and I do okay. have a, a, a yes, yes. She she and I do have a dra a, a drag daughter who was on um, RuPaul's Drag Race, Honey Mahogany, in season two or something. Oh. Uh, you know, so we, we, we have, a, you know, a good, good, good drag children together, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So you were, so you were uh, for, for Christmas, you were pulling uh, Oliver Twist, were you? <laughs> An Oliver Twist? 
What, 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 some what, more, what, please. Give me some more. You say oh, you only had boots and everything. Oh, no, I, I, well, no, I was not your average Soviet child. No. My mother was Ekaterina Stolinskaya, prima ballerina for the Bolshev, considered by many to be one of the most beautiful and interesting women of her generation. Uh, apparently, the apple doesn't roll very far from the bushel. Well, you know, men, they threw themselves at mama. Artists, party members, leaders of industry. And it wasn't mm -hmm. long before my mother became the final mistress of Joseph Stalin. The <laughs> That Joseph Stalin, I know the ruthless dictator responsible for the deaths of millions of my comrades. But, you know, to a three-year-old, he didn't seem so bad. He was basically like a Russian Santa, you know, a uniform, facial hair, and a book with the names and deeds of every Russian citizen. Except the elves didn't get that book. Uh, the KGB did. Basically the same. Oh, okay. So in Russia, they really don't believe in a Santa Claus coming down the chimney. Well, I don't know. I left Russia when I was so young, you know, but but, but no, I don't think so. You're right. It's not as big a holiday in, in the Soviet Union, in Russia, as it is here. You know, here it's just a joyous time of year. And yeah, I, I, love, I love it, I love it. I haven't put on my, 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 my sweater for Christmas. Mm -hmm. There's a it's cat. cute, it's Thank very you. cute. I have mine on, it says naughty and nice. Oh, well, you are mm -hmm. naughty and nice. That's what I hear, darling. <laughs> I'm talking about There's a fire on this boob and a cat wearing a coat on this boob. <laughs> because cats wearing coats. That makes yes. sense. Oh, yes. Hello. Um, now, what do you, what are, what do you think, what, were, what are some of the best moments for you oh. on Christmas and some of the worst times? Because you know, people have the worst time during the holidays oh, with family yeah. and friends. Oh, it's and I know it's hard to believe, but there are some who, don't, who do not find this the hap happiest season of all, no. For some people, it's very stressful. For instance, mm -hmm. you know, I hate, I, hate, I hate buying gifts. You know, mm -hmm. I, I say to people, I say, darling, what would you like for the Christmas? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I'm sure you'll think of something. If you don't know what you want, how the hell am I supposed to know? Mm -hmm. You get nothing. No, I mean, I'll still get them something. And we're, we're all guilty of it. I mean, and that's how I, I, you end up with useless gifts, like, like letter openers or, or, or milk frothers, <laughs> or in my case, an entire drawer of iTunes gift cards. Now, I have been all over the world and I have never found an iTunes store where I could go <laughs> in and buy some CDs. I mean, is that too much to ask? I don't, I don't understand. Now, what are some, now, what do you think is, what, what do you think of drag today? Well, you know, it's funny. When I first started performing here in San Francisco, there, there, there were, I think there was one drag show in the Castro and, and a couple down in Soma, you know, and it, it was gritty and it was, it was, it was, it was, it was artistic and, and interesting. And, and, you know, the average drag queen only lasts about, I don't know, three years. That's what I say. You know, mm -hmm. some little, some little uh, gay wisp of a thingy comes in and they get, they're like, oh, I'll be fancy. And you get all the best, uh, you know, uh, booze and boys and other things and, and, and it's changed it's changed you know there's so much more acceptance towards drag you know i, I think that the, the, that drag race show has has definitely opened the world up to 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 to, to, to drag in, in all its forms you know mm -hmm. of course there is a, a certain understanding that drag should be one thing or another thing but i've never believed that i think drag is whatever you feel like doing darling you be yourself because if if you are not yourself Self, who else will be? Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you lived in San Francisco? Oh, well, I've been performing here for nearly 20 years. Oh, I know. God. It's a long so, time. Well, you know, you know what they say. They say San Francisco has the most, I mean, in the world, San Francisco has the most LGBT rich mil millionaires. Well, I mean, it's a very expensive um, place to live, you know, and it's very small. It's only seven miles by seven miles large. And, and yes, there are a lot of very wealthy people. That's because uh, people make money in the Valley of Silicon. And, and, oh. and, 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 and yes, and then they choose to live in San Francisco. And, mm -hmm. and it, it's wonderful. I mean, it does mean that you can have a nice patron, 
era there. Uh, but but it is hard, you know, getting started out as a young person. It's a very expensive thing to go into the drag, or, or so I hear. And 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 uh, I feel that in in San Francisco it's even harder because of the extreme cost that it, it, it takes to live in in our in our fair city by the sea. Luckily, my apartment is rent control, so they're going to have to take me out of here heels first. Oh. <laughs> So now, you know, they have, I haven't been to the, you know, in San Francisco, like I said, in many years, but the most exciting part of San Francisco I found was Fisherman's Wharf. Oh, yes. You know, I haven't been to the wharf. In a, you know, Fisherman's Wharf is one of those places where everyone goes when they come to San Francisco. But people who, who live in San Francisco, we, we don't go there very often because it, it's hard, it's hard to get there. I mean, it's far away and there are, there are sea lions, seals, they hang out there, and I don't want to get close to a seal. <laughs> no. Now, now, what, now, what do you think, do you think things have changed or oh, will oh, change? Yes, I think, I think it's so much easier and more acceptable now to be a drag queen in this world. You know, uh, uh, to drop the character for a minute and just talk uh, as 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 a drag queen and not as just Auntie Katya, which I am. Okay. Um, definitely, I think there was a time, you know, when when I started doing drag, where uh, if you did drag, it was very hard to find a partner uh, or you know a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, a, a significant other. If you were a drag queen, you know, we were looked at very much like porn stars, um, something exciting for the community, uh, but not something that was really accessible or accepted by the, uh, you know, the, the cis male or the cis male, not cis, yeah, yeah, cis gay male community. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you could, you could meet someone and have a tryst uh, but the chances of dating were much smaller. Uh, whereas now, you know, anyone can do drag. You can be a lawyer. You can be an accountant. There's not a stigma in the same way, um, which is a wonderful thing. So it's great to see, you know, the, this new generation of, of you know, queer folk um, coming up in this world that's so much more accepting and so much more um, open to who to who they want to be and who they want to try to be and allows them to do the things that they want to try and do. It's, it's very exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. You know, the good thing about all of this, when I first started doing the show three years ago, when they when he came to me, um, an actor came to me and told me I should be doing what I'm doing now. And I kept telling him, I can't do that. He says, no, you can do it because I read your stuff and I look at your stuff. You need to be moving in the direction of this. And I think that you will have a bright future if you start moving your butt in this direction. Stop talking about it and start doing it. Mm -hmm. So I kept, I, in my room, I started practicing. But in the long run, I started, he, he kept pushing me off of Twitter. He kept saying, no, that ain't working. That ain't working. Do it this way. Mm -hmm. And just make it simple, cut and dry. And talk to your locals. That's what you want. You want to talk to the locals around the world and the people that are not the celebrities. You talk to the ones that are going to be the celebrities, or or just the you know the working girls. You know, uh, I've been doing drag a long time. I've had a, I've had my own show for fifteen years. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, once a month for fifteen years, I've had a show. You know, and I've seen many a drag queen come and go. Uh, mm -hmm. And it is nice that you can plot your own course and plot your own adventure and f find success in new ways. I mean. I had never thought of joining TikTok when I did. I had no idea that people would start calling me Auntie Katia. Uh, you know, it's just something organic that happens. I think uh, in drag, I mean, I do character drag. So, I mean, as you could tell from the first half of this interview, uh, <laughs> I, I'm a crazy lady. Uh, but um, it's fun. What I, like, what I like is that your rapport with people you don't know around the world, you connect so quickly with them and they connect with you. And that is a good thing. And like you said, drag is now becoming accepted. So maybe this is what's helping that. But also people are starting to feel like they're not alone. They see you and they think, wow, this, well, this is a drag queen. I This is what I look up to. This is what I wanted to do. This is what I want to be. And it's an older drag queen. She can teach me so much. But as, I, as Katya always says, you know, everyone has parents. It's their responsibility to keep you alive, to keep you breathing. 
But aunties, uncles and mames, it is our job to help you become the person that you're meant to be. Because you're the only person who knows who that is. You know, we were here to show you new doors, doors you never even dreamed existed, because we have walked through those doors before you. And we can be there on the other side. You know, nothing is completely new in this world. And everyone has been through hardship and trouble and turmoil. And, and it's good to, to, to show people that you will make it through and you will find your own way to do it. And you don't have to do it just like everybody else. I mean, if someone told me that I had to paint my face uh, the way that, that the young drag queens do now, I'd say, I have no goddamn idea what that even means. I can paint this face. It's the one I have. Those are my <laughs> eyebrows. That's my nose. Yet, I can still go out and, and, and work with all the, those fine young ladies just, just as easily. You know, except yeah. that I wear smaller shoes because my feet hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kat, yeah, I, I just wanted to say, you're amazing. You really are. And I can tell even you. out of character, you're an amazing person. And I just want to say thank you so much oh, to for coming you on to the so show. Thank you so much for having yeah. me, Stephanie. For, um, inspiring and educating others and keeping the young children engaged and helping others understand that we are here just like everybody else, regardless of how different we look or our perspectives of what they think drag should be or what they think you should be as a human being. Um, and it's this window of opportunity now on the internet has given us a little bit more power to sort of get our voices heard. Yes. And this is a great thing. So um, you're performing tonight, right? I am. I know I'm hopping, running off to a gig. It's a bi okay. busy, busy night, fifth time in face this week. And it's well, I want to Well, I want to say happy holidays, Merry Thank Christmas, you too. happy Hanukkah. Thank you, um, honey. You too, my and All of those. And I just want to say I, to our audience today, I want to just say, um, can you leave us with a little inspirational Auntie Katya Smirnoff Sky advice? I know you're putting me on the spot, but I'm sure I can think of something. <laughs> um, Give us a little holiday a little, advice. A little, a little holiday advice. Well, you know, people are, are so uh, eager to tell you who to be. Uh, uh, what to be, um, and, and and I always like to think that 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 in my my liquor cabinet of life, there is every kind of bottle, every shape, every color, every size, every vintage, and, and there's always a place at, at my table for anyone who wants to show up, because your auntie's always thirsty, and oh. life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. So just keep on living the best way you know how. And on that note, I just want to say thank you so much for thank being on the show today. And it, this is our little holiday light show for everybody out there. So you guys take care of yourselves. It's Christmas, New Year's Eve. Be safe, have fun, and just do something. And just try to stay positive and just be you. That's all you can do. So until next time, my friends, right here from Pronoun TV and the Stephanie Stevens Show, stay blessed. And good night, everybody. Thank you, Katya. Thank you, Stephanie. Good night, darlings. Good night. Are we off?